of an interview when they're carrying a sword. <laughs> yeah. no I'm cosplaying no a little bit. Uh, weapons at the door. I should answer the question. <laughs> All right, first question for you. Well, I've been so, decapitated. No. Do you think Finch is regretting the decision not to kill the congressman now that it's all gone to... No, I, I, if he is regretting anything, he, he may be regretting building the machine. Okay, now, he's going he, may, he may think it's, it's, it's turned to naught. It's not, it's, my worst fears have come true, that, it's, that it no longer reflects my value system. That now it has, now it's self-regulating, now it's making decisions on its own, and I, I don't agree with that. He's walked away from it. He means not to have anything more to do with the machine. You know, when is, if ever, Fusco is ever going to find out about the machine? Reese brought that up in the finale, he mentioned the machine, he's like, what machine? And he's like, come on. I don't know, we'll see, maybe this season, maybe this will be the year. <laughs> That's the other thing. Do you feel your character got left out? Everybody else just disappeared. What do you think happened? Well, they're just off the grid. I mean, they're still being a pain in the ass calling my office. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, Michael, it looks like Finch has lost everything. Um, and uh, he's forced out of his lair. Um, how's that going to be? working for you during this next season and how are you, how are you going to recover that? Or some sense well, of as, as you might imagine, he's always looking for, you know, he's going to he's going to rebuild somehow, somewhere. He's got to find a new place to live. Yeah, it's going to take, it's going to take some time. Does it have a backup? I would find that Finch would be a person to have a backup and then a backup Well, he has backup. lots of backups and fail-safes. But as far as a nerve center, a place to live, that, that has to be found afresh. What about funding? Is his new, you know, is he still a reclusive billionaire but of a different type? Or is he like working as a janitor now and... <laughs> he, his, his money still exists, but he can't, he can't touch it without putting himself on okay. you know, Samaritan's radar. So they're having to find... Mop, mop, mop. <laughs> more, more, more creative ways. Do you think so there's no 100 there, as we're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Finch is going to try to communicate more directly with the machine this season? I think Finch means not to speak to the machine at all. Right now. Right. I remember in the finale, the, the scene that, other than the library being destroyed, the scene that really broke my heart was everybody kind of breaking away from each other yeah. and walking in different directions. How do you see them kind of coming back together and even working together as a team? Well, of course, that's, that's what season four will be largely about, at least in the early going, you know, putting the pieces back together. Do you have in your, I, well, you've already seen it. I was going to say, do you have in your mind how you would see that happening? But all I've seen are the first two episodes, the first two scripts. We're not privy to where things are going long. So that stuff's not even written. One of the things that was the most difficult thing for me this season was losing Carter. Yeah. And I wonder, you know, for your character, that must have been an incredible loss. Um, how do you pick up and kind of go from there? Well, I think, I think uh, first off, I think it was a great send-off that they, that they gave Carter's, Carter's character. I mean, you talk about going out in ways it was. She, she definitely did. And, and, uh, that those those three or four episodes, I think, were some of the best television. I, as a fan of the show, I've ever seen. I just thought it was, it was really, really great stuff. Uh, I think, you know, like I said, I think with the loss of Cotto, I think it brought Fusco specifically back to that once heroic image of himself that, that maybe, you know, got him interested in becoming a police officer in the first place. And it was really kind of time for him to put his big boy pants on and, and, and step up, you know. Um, but um, it would be interesting to see where it all goes this year. You know, when Jim was, was here previously, he made this reference to, he kind of likened where the show was heading to Star Wars. And that there is this... Empire strikes back. Yeah, this yeah. Empire, the Empire is, has, has struck back. And, you know, now... You know you, he used to smoke a lot of pot, right? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, there is this uh, notion that you guys are going to 
you know, this this upcoming season is going to be about building the rebellion because boy, you guys are really in a spot. Yeah. We were outsiders before. Now we're going to be real outsiders. Mm. Now, now we are going to be a team ag against whom the cards are really stacked. You, the, uh, because they also reference the fact that there was going to be conflict between uh, Finch and Reese about how to deal with numbers right. now. So, yeah. can you elaborate a little bit? Well, yeah. Mr. Finch has w walked away from the whole mess. He's washed his hands of it. He does not mean to work with them anymore. Mm. So we'll have to see, you know, if that can get thawed out. It does seem like the perspective is bigger. And the way we, he, was, he was sort of referring to it is that there are every life is valuable, but Finch has this much, you have a wider view that you're looking at and saying the, the game is bigger than the number that comes, you know, our way. Is that fair to, is, is that where he's at right now? Well, I think he, I think he never stops hoping that ethical values will be reflected in ethical behavior and ethical products, even artificial intelligence. But I, I'm a, he may be doomed to disappoint. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.